Hey, welcome back to Workflow. A lot of people have been asking me questions about the strip boxes I use here, because you know I'm using Young Nuo speed lights and a speed light adapter to attach this all together. So today we're gonna pop that bubbly and shoot a little sparkling beverage image in a low key catalog black setting. So this is a great beginner's tutorial, I'd say, because although catalog black's kind of challenging, well, it presents a challenge in a certain way, it also serves as a utility for some pretty swift editing capabilities. So we have a nice black background set up and that's a really nice solution because you can make any background black by underexposing it, but you might be fighting in this white room to achieve that. That helps us a lot. This is nice and static so we can adjust it and I'll just kind of shoot it right sideways here and see if we can get a nice reflection and begin to carve out the look we enjoyed seeing earlier. And we can check our black point and you can access that by holding Alt or Option and clicking the black node when you're editing your images in RAW. And that's really useful because it'll tell us where we're clipping. So ideally, we'll be clipping the entire background by the end of it, which will unlock a lot of potential, but we're within striking distance because that was just a few points away. Now, one thing I want to do is actually raise this up. I don't want you to see the change that happens. See, there was a bit of a gradient in the highlight itself. And we sort of moved the hot spot and that totally changes the way things look. So that's something I pay attention to. That's a side effect of shooting with a speed light. It doesn't have the best dispersion. I do have an inner baffle, which helps. So the real focus can be the sparkling beverage and the garnish we're gonna introduce in a moment. So we're gonna focus on making this symmetrical. And I'm just eyeballing that. Like I said, there'll be plenty of tweaks to come. So these are pretty thick highlights. They're a lot different than the original. Okay, we got some really weird stuff going on there. So what I'm gonna do is turn our one light away so we can fix this light by light. Okay, and you see that that light has a pretty nasty internal reflection. That's not sitting the best. I'm gonna to try to get it a bit closer but angle it a bit more away. So from this perspective, it's becoming a little thinner and it's gonna be a really delicate balance, but we'll be able to solve it after a few adjustments. I'm gonna get this light back in the mix, and actually it's not looking too bad. It's a good starting spot. I'm shooting with a really cheap wireless remote here, and I'll try to link one in the description if you guys wanna check it out. This is pretty beautiful, I like the way it is. We achieved the symmetry near the bottom, and it took a bit of adjusting. There's a black line going on that we can easily correct in post, and we will pretty much desaturate the glass probably in post-production, so we'll be able to make it look a lot more uniform. Yeah, let's proceed with this. Okay, I'm just gonna give our flashes a little bit more juice to work with. So now we're at an eighth power, and the reason I want an increase in power is because we need to use a reflection. So this is a piece of plexi, and it's just a white card essentially, and we'll use it as a tool by sort of banking the light up at a 45 degree angle and check out how simple this is. It's really, really amazing. Take another shot for comparison and you see it serves as a rim light, literally. So if you don't have a top light and a lot of people don't, because it's a bit of a leap in purchasing, hope you appreciate that little hack and that's easily something I will export to the selects folder and I'll patch in later. Now let's go ahead and roll our behind the scene pullback shot for a moment. And this is what we're looking for in our Facebook group. So you can post your pullback shot and your final image and you know, show an international community what you've been working on in the realm of product photography. So we got our sparkle in here and we got some nice blackberries that'll add some compositional interest hopefully. And just stir things up and make it a little more provocative and a little more of a standalone image. I'd say that's like a standalone work, even though you could definitely sort of extrapolate these ideas to a bigger context. And I encourage you to do so and share us your results. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is just step out of this frame and make sure to capture a nice clean slate, which will benefit us if we have to repair something later in Photoshop. Things look a little different here now that we poured the bubbly. It's a pretty stark contrast. No bubbles are even showing up, we're so underexposed, but the Blackberry will catalyze things in a moment. Now, it's all about the detail work. We'll use a simple utensil to stir up some activity, getting some really beautiful organic shots We'll build up a large library of these images, and you might as well, you took all the time to set up the lights. By having a large selection, we'll hopefully find a nice quality within it, because the way the light curves around the berry, or the way the bubbles ended up, a lot of this stuff comes down to chance. And by having a large quantity of shots to select from, 
we can find something that even if it's not perfect, it's kind of like 80% of the way there. And I'm just going to show you a few ways to beef this up even further. Let's bring up a hue saturation layer. And what I want to do is just saturate this to show you the cast that's present. You may have noticed it earlier. There was some blue bleeding in from the sides. I'm going to go ahead and just desaturate this image. I'm going to click the mask and hit B to bring up my brush and paint a black brush over the berry. So I'm emitting the effect. This was just a sparkling water. It wasn't a champagne, so I'm fine with having monochromatic tone in the bubbles as well as the glass. It doesn't need to be yellow or anything. And that's a really simple step just to make sure the color of the glassware and the bubbles is completely uniform. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'll invert the mask, which seems like a weird thing to do. But now this layer is just affecting the berry. And you see it's black and white. But that's because we're desaturated up here. Now if we increase the saturation, we get back to where we were. And I thought the berry was a little depressing, was a little uh, muted maybe is a better word. I'll turn up the saturation and here it's still a little boring, but up here it's like uh, it becomes alien. So somewhere in between, hopefully we'll get a little vibrance, a little punchiness. And is that too punchy? Leave me a comment below and you let me know if that's too punchy, but I'm going to keep rolling with that. These bubbles are a little underwhelming, but I went with a simple sparkling water, but we're going to beef that up a bit. Let's click our background layer. And with a simple five pixel feather, let's grab a nice looking bubble. Oh, well, that's a really nice looking bubble right there. We'll grab that. You see the bit of a feather applied just to be safe. We'll control J to duplicate it. So that duplicates it on its own layer, which is kind of a weird thing to do, but it's really easy now because we can move it around. And we begin to fulfill the composition a little bit. Hit control J to duplicate one again. And I'll just keep rocking out here with the same bubble for a little bit. And we can control T and we can begin to rotate these bubbles because obviously there's a bit of a duplication going on here. And while I don't think people have enough time on their hands to really notice using the same bubble, who knows, there's some, there's some freaks out there. So this is looking a bit better. Let's use a different bubble to differentiate. Control J off the background. And I'll actually resize this to make it smaller. Any way you can sort of randomize it. And when you're using a brush to create fake snow, or fake bokeh or something. Randomization is a really common thing you find in brush tools to sort of do the same thing. So we're kind of mimicking a real technique when it comes to brush manipulation. So I added a ton of bubbles there. Now I'm not sure it looks its best and this is the kind of thing I probably obsess over for a few minutes to make sure it looks good. I think that beefs things up nicely. Let's put this whole layer on lighten. And you can even duplicate a whole grouping. I'll hit control T here to flip this. I'll flip it vertical. Again, just to sort of stir things up. And now we have a whole second set of bubbles. Now, you see there's a ton of bubbles around the berry. That's actually natural. You know, it caused some activity. But I did select the berry. So what we could do is, on a new layer, we did control J on our workflow layer, this base layer. And that'll isolate the berry. And that's really important, because now we can get in between these two layers. I just brought out a simple black brush and we could paint behind if we wanted to get rid of this. Again, I don't want to do this. I just want to illustrate what we could do. And we could even paint this whole area black. And that'd be a really simple approach because now we can actually micro adjust the position of our berry itself, which is just good to know. So everything's really subject to almost like a Frankenstein level of manipulation. Here's the final version I threw together, which is pretty darn similar to what you just saw. So it's a really simple process. You can throw this together in a matter of minutes, and it's pretty much just a little accent on top of the standard glass on black pack shot. Thank you very much for joining the community here at Workflow. Make sure to subscribe, hit that bell if you're feeling nutty. Have a great day wherever you are. My name is Dustin Dolby, and I'll catch you next week here on Workflow. Ciao.